Welcome back to Science at Home. My name is Jade and I'm a chemist at UC Berkeley. So last week we did a really cool activity called uh, Kitchen Chemistry. We did a bunch of reactions in the kitchen with baking soda and vinegar, which is awesome. I love doing reactions. That's the whole reason I'm a chemist and I've been really missing being in lab. However, in real life it's really not that easy. In lab when I do a reaction, I'm not just done after I mix things together. I have to do more work. Imagine, for example, that your parents are making pasta for you and they put a bunch of uncooked noodles in boiling water and it cooks the pasta just perfectly. And then they bring you a bowl of cooked noodles in boiling gross pasta water. Would you be very happy about that? No, you want to have your cooked noodles, the things you want, separated from the things you don't want, the boiling hot water. And that's kind of like what it's like in the chemistry lab. After I do the reaction, I have to separate what I want from the things that I don't want. And I did this with a tool called chromatography. That's kind of a big word. Let's break it down a little bit. So chroma means color and graphy means writing. So chromatography is just a big word that means color writing. And this is um, really similar to what I do in lab because the molecules that I make are all colors of the rainbow. And when I separate them, I see a rainbow. Maybe it's like red and orange and yellow and blue. So because I can't go to lab, I came up with a demonstration for you guys to do in your kitchens at home where we will do chromatography using colored markers instead of molecules. Okay, so to do our kitchen chromatography experiment, let's start off by gathering our materials. Now it's important to note, you don't need to go to the store to get materials for this um, demonstration. We can make it work with whatever you have around your house. I'll give you several options for the materials and you can use whatever you have on hand. So for starters, grab a parent and start rounding up the following. You're going to need a science notebook and a pen, a ruler, washable colored markers, it's important that they're not permanent markers, scissors, pens and pencils, tape, some cups, um, a liquid to use for our separation. So what will work is either water or isopropanol, which is also um, found in hand sanitizer. Um, both of these will work really well. Neither is better than the other. And you'll need some sort of paper. So in my house, I had paper towels or coffee filters. Printer paper won't work very well, but paper towels, tissues, um, tissue paper, and coffee filters will all work really well. So we will put a list up on the screen and you guys can pause the video and with your parents' help, go find all of these materials. Okay, let's dive into kitchen chromatography. Take your black marker. Did you guys know that a black marker is usually made of a bunch of different colors layered on top of each other? Do you believe me? I can prove it. Here is the black marker. What does it look like when I layer together green, blue, and red? Can you tell the difference between the green, blue, and red layered markers and the black marker? Probably not very much. Maybe you still don't believe me. That's okay. We can prove that the black marker is made up of different colors using chromatography. So to do chromatography, we need strips of paper and a liquid. The strips of paper are like an obstacle course for the colors. Imagine we line up the black marker at the beginning of the obstacle course. If the obstacle course is too hard, our markers can't move through it and they'll still appear black. On the other hand, if our obstacle course is too easy, our markers will race right through to the end and they'll still look black. But if our obstacle course is just right, maybe the red marker is really good at it and it makes it all the way to the end. But the blue marker is not so hot at the obstacle course and he's stuck at the beginning. And the green marker is okay, so he ends up somewhere in the middle. So if we make the best obstacle course possible, we'll be able to separate our black marker into the three different colors that it's made up of. And we'll do this using chromatography. So the black marker is sort of like my reaction mixture in lab. It has what I want in it, say the green marker, but it also has the things I don't want, the red and blue marker. Or the black marker is like the pasta in the water, and you only want the noodles and not the water. So how are we going to do this? We need to design the best possible obstacle course using the materials that we have in our houses. 
So we need to find the best possible combination of paper and liquid to make an awesome obstacle course for our markers. All right, let's design our best obstacle course. To start, we need to set up our science notebook. So I've set it up to test all of the variables that I have in my house. I made this cool table. On the top, I have the liquid or solvent that I'm going to be testing. So in my house, I have water and rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. If you don't have isopropanol, that's okay. Maybe your table looks like this. On the side, I have the different types of paper that I'm going to test. In my house, I have coffee filters and paper towels. If you have Kleenexes or tissue paper, maybe you have more entries down here. Or maybe you only have paper towels. That's okay too. Whatever you guys have, make a table to test it. I'm going to put a number in these boxes between one and five. One is bad. It means that I didn't get any separation or my um, colors went through the obstacle course too fast. Five is the best. I see lots of different colors separated on the piece of paper. So this is how you should set up your science notebook. We can pause the video now and put up a picture for you guys. To start, take your ruler and measure how tall your cup is. So mine is about four and a half inches. So I cut strips of paper that were four inches, about a half inch shorter than my cup. The next thing I need to do is put a starting line for my obstacle course. I'm going to do that about one inch from the bottom of the piece of paper. So here's our obstacle course and here's the starting line. Now, oh, it's important to use a pencil for your starting line. If you use a pen or a marker, it's going to be confusing when you try to see how your marker separated. So make sure you use a pencil for that part. Now we're going to put our black marker at the start of our obstacle course. I'm going to draw a line over the pencil starting line, but I'm not going to touch the edges of the paper. Then I'm going to take a piece of scotch tape and an extra pen, and I'm going to tape my obstacle course to the pen. So when you're ready, it should look something like this. Next, we need to set up our cups. So take a cup and fill it with the liquid that you would like to test about an inch from the bottom of the cup. Okay, so at my house, I have water and isopropyl alcohol. So I have two cups with isopropyl alcohol and two cups with water. And at my house, I want to test paper towels versus coffee filters. So I have four different cups for my four different combinations. So to start, the test, I'm going to put, balance my pens over the top of the cups. It's important that the water touches the bottom of the strip, but the black marker is not submerged in the water. So I'll start them off and we will see how it goes. So this one isn't quite long enough. I'm going to have to add a little bit more isopropanol to the cup so that it can touch the bottom of the strip of paper. There we go. So over here you can see the water and paper towel one is actually separating quite well. The black at the bottom is starting to look blue at the top. This coffee filter in water uh, is going a little bit more slowly. It hasn't made it to the marker yet. Isopropanol in paper towel is moving along. We're starting to see some separation. And isopropanol and coffee filter has not reached the marker yet. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes since we paused the video. Let's check on our obstacle courses. So here are the results. In the water race, we have the paper towel obstacle course. What we see is a lot of black color with a little bit of blue on the top. So this is a sign that this obstacle course was too easy. All of the colors made it through just the same until the very end when the blue started to come out. But we can only see that black is made of blue in this obstacle course. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a rating of two. Now if we look at the coffee filter and water, we see a much different story. At the top here we see some red, in the middle there's some blue, and at the bottom it's sort of green colored. So this was a very good obstacle course. The red was super good at the obstacle course and made it really far. The blue is kind of stuck in the middle, and the greenish color is down at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and give 
the uh, coffee filter plus water combination a five. The paper towel plus isopropanol combination did okay. We see a lot of black down at the bottom and then blue and green coming out at the top. So this one was slightly better than our water and paper towel combination. We definitely see separations of blue and green, but our red is still missing. So I gave this one a three. Finally, we have the coffee filter plus isopropanol. And this obstacle course was way too hard. All of the colors are start, stuck at the starting line and we don't see really any separation at all. There's a little bit of green coming through. So I gave this one a one. So over here on our science notebook, I filled in the ratings into our table, and we can see that water plus coffee filters is the winner. So this is the best possible combination that I have at my house. Now it's important to note that your combination might be different and that there's no right answer. But using the coffee filters plus water, we can now test all of our markers to see which ones are made of combinations of colors and which ones are made of single colors. So I'm gonna set that up, I'm gonna test a few different markers, I'll do the black, the blue, and the brown, just to see if they're made of combinations of colors or single colors. And I'm gonna use water and the coffee filter papers, but maybe you'll use something different. So I'm gonna set that up and we'll pause the video and we'll come back and show you the results. All right, so welcome back. It's been about 30 minutes. Um, I set up some more tests using coffee filters and water and I'm gonna show you guys the results. So come closer. So first I tested the blue marker and I found that it's mostly just made of blue pigments. So it's kind of darker blue at the bottom and lighter blue at the top, but overall mostly one color. And I bet we would see something similar if we tested, say, the yellow or the orange. Um, I did the black again and gave it a little bit more time than I did before. And now we see some really nice separation of the red at the top, the blue in the middle, and kind of greenish color at the bottom. So that's a fun one. But most exciting, we have the brown marker. So the brown marker, it turns out, is actually made of purple blue, and orange, which I had no idea until I tested this. So maybe you guys can test your markers at home and find out what colors they're made of. There's a lot of different things to test. Um, and one more fun thing that I did with this um, demonstration is make some art. So um, instead of cutting strips of paper, I folded my coffee filters. I kept them round and I folded them like how you fold a piece of paper to make a snowflake. And then I put a line of color here and dipped them in the water. And I was able to make some pretty cool snowflake kind of looking pieces of art that I've taped in my window. So maybe you guys can try this at home. Um, it works with coffee filters and paper towels and I used water for all of these. Um, so I think we could make some pretty cool pieces of art with this uh, science demonstration. So I hope that you guys have a lot of fun doing kitchen chromatography. This has been hashtag science at home. If you're a scientist, feel free to join the cause and make a video. And if you're a kid watching this, I can't wait to see what cool kitchen chromatography artwork that you guys make in your homes. Thanks for watching. Bye.